listening to me. I come by the blood of Jesus. I come by the blood of Jesus. I come by the blood that speaks mercy. I come by the blood that speaks grace. We come by the blood. 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 And with a cry. tuning in. My name is Nalongre Chuku and you are watching The Strange Acts of God. This is the NSPBD Testimony Show where we call in the experts just to go over the wonders of God that we have continued to see and hear on a day-to-day -day basis on NSPPD. And for that person that's tuning in for the first time and is wondering, what exactly is NSPPD? Where have you been? NSPPD is the new season's prophetic prayers and declarations brought to you by Streams of Joy International, the home of what God cannot do does not exist. Catch up with us weekdays, 7 a.m. Nigerian time, across all of our social media platforms as we continue to revolutionize our world through the power of prayer. Today on The Strange Acts of God, I am joined by a first-time guest. She is a consultant public health physician and an epidemiologist. I hope I got that right. Her yes, name yes. is Dr. Ulaku Ukebu. And I am super excited to welcome you to our show. Good morning, Dr. Ulaku. Good morning, Pastor Longi. I'm super delighted to we be are, here with the you. The honor is ours. Thank you so much for coming today. We are so happy and excited to have you. Thanks for having me. Who is an epidemiologist? So the epidemiologist is somebody who has taken further studies in the field of epidemiology. Okay. Epidemiology is a study of the causes, the distribution, okay. the determinants of any kind of illness you can think of, whether okay. it's communicable, non-communicable. Oh, wow. So that study, all it aims at is preferring ways to control different diseases. That's okay. the work of an epidemiologist. Okay, and yes. a public health consultant. So public health, like the name implies, does everything, preventive medicine, okay. curative medicine, uh -huh. and we're actually more in the domain of preventive medicine. So when okay. you see in, um, vaccinations, immunization oh, coming right. to you, right, right. the issue of health education to prevent a lot of things is also coming from the purview of the public health physician. Okay, so yes. we are excited to have you, epidemiologist. Never heard of it, really excited <laughs> to have you with Tom us Twisting. today. Wow, awesome, awesome. So we have three testimonies lined up today. But before we go into those testimonies, it is our custom to take a recap and see just what heaven was up to in the course of the week. This week on NSPPD, Hmm. We saw high blood pressure and dizziness reverse, severe shoulder pain reversed in the course of the awesome. week. Glory to God. Awesome. Demonic blackout reversed. Intestinal obstruction reversed. Miraculous wow. death wow. cancellation of 75 million Whoa. naira. Whoa. Prostrate enlargement reversed. Glory to God. A mother restored from coma, diabetic Hallelujah. sore. Re healed, glory to God, career, career stagnation, stagnation reversed. reversed, wow, enlarged liver and cysts reversed. reversed, DDD, degenerative disc disease reversed, abnormal bleeding of over wow. two years, I remember that wow. testimony, wow, a complete reproductive system was replaced, eight years baroness terminated, Demonic and chronic asthma was reversed. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Fallopian tubes that were cut off Another were replaced. Miracle. Yes, yet wow. again. Bell's palsy reversed in the course of the week. Fibroids disappear. Glory to God. Wow. Six years childlessness terminated. 
Negative conditions reversed. High cholesterol, fatty harvest liver. Harvest of miracles. Such a harvest of miracles. Mucus balls reversed. Blood in the urine reversed. Deep vein thrombosis reversed. Hemorrhagic stroke reversed. Hallelujah. Wow. Nine years of infertility. Wow. Breast cancer reversed. Wow. Leukemia reversed. Awesome. Cervical cancer. Awesome. Wow. Wow. Reversed. Dead son back to life. A shortened arm was elongated. Another creative wow. miracle there. Wow. 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 What, what a an week. avalanche of miracles. Thank what a you, week. Jesus. What a week. Thank you, Thank Jesus. you Lord. Thank you, yes, Jesus. Yes, an avalanche of miracles cutting across such a wide spectrum as, as well. You can Glory say that to again. God. Glory to God. What a phenomenal You know, the week. first three days of this week have been our days of divine evidence. So yes. It just was distributed yes, far yes, and yes, wide. Yes. People just received their evidence. They are carrying their evidence. Yes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Our first testifier is Sister Hannah Lisa. She's testifying from London, England, and she testifies about demonic body odor reversed. Glory to God. Click on the share button if you're yet to. We'll be right back after her testimony. My name is Hannah Lisa. I'm making this video from England, precisely in London. What God cannot do does not exist. Pastor Jerry, I'm here to give thanks and praise to God Almighty. Pastor Jerry, I'm that woman that God showed mercy. I'm that woman with a bad odor. Pastor Jerry, I traveled. I went to my country. I went to Africa. I came back December 3rd, December 5th, 2022. I start perceiving this bad odor on my body. When I tell you bad, Pastor Jerry, it smells like rotten eggs and poo. Like when you take poo, you lock it in a can and open it after three days. That's how I was smelling. Pastor Jerry, if I smell my body like that, the, the odor is just bad. Pastor Jerry, I couldn't go out. I go to the bedroom and smell. I go everywhere in my, in my flat. I smell bad. Everywhere smell bad. My skin, I have a bath maybe three times a day. Immediately, I have a bath. Dry my skin. Ten minutes later, the odor starts again. The smell was on my skin. I wash. I wear deodorant. I wear expensive perfumes. Still, I stink. I stink really, really bad, Pastor Jerry. I don't know what to do. So the 22nd of January, 2023, when he said, Any demonic smell coming out from your body, that you have tried to do anything for it to stop, and it refuses to stop, if you are the one putting it on the live stream, by the power that raised Jesus from the dead, I command, let it be reversed. Let it be reversed. That was me, Pastor Jerry. So straight away, I wrote on the live screen saying, it is me, oh, Pastor Jerry, it is me. The next two days later, the smell stopped on my skin. May your cup never run dry. May the oil on your head never run dry. May your enemies bow down in shame. Thank you, Pastor Jerry. Today, I can actually go out. No more smell. I'm that woman that God showed me mercy. The odor stopped on my body. Thank you, Pastor Jerry. Pastor Jerry, thank you. What God cannot do does not exist. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow. wow. Glory to God. Wow. wow. Amazing. 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 Wow. Somebody she's... was literally cut off from everything. Yes. yes. Isolated from the world. All of a sudden. Mm. She wasn't anticipating mm. it. Mm. Wow. Mm. Yeah. She said she came back from a trip from Africa. December 3rd <laughs> and, by December, <laughs> and by December 5th, she begins to smell. So away from village people, you know, because people just tend to assume, okay, she mm. went to the village, she came back, you know, away from that. I want to know, are there environmental causes, maybe change in environment or change in diet that could be responsible for someone just beginning to smell all of a sudden? Yeah, there are many causes for mm -hmm. somebody beginning to smell. Mm -hmm. There's one that is hereditary, the phenylketoaminuria. Okay. It's rare, 
but it's hereditary, meaning it's inherited from the parents. It just doesn't start. Okay. And then most times body odor is coming either from the mouth, halitosis, okay. or it's coming from the sweat glands, okay. or it's coming from the genitals, or it's coming from open wounds that are decaying. Okay. So in her own case, this is a grown woman. Okay, the ones that come from the sweat glands, for example, um, they they become very prominent once the person enters puberty. Okay. That's when the, the all the sweat glands, when they call them apocrine glands, uh -huh. when they become fully developed and active. Okay. But this woman is past puberty. Mm. And she didn't have all that all mm. of a sudden as a full-grown adult. Mm, mm, that's mm. when she suddenly starts having it. Mm, mm. Most times, people that have body odor at some point, they become accustomed to the smell. Mm. They, are, they just acclimatize. Mm -hmm. But if you listen to her, you hear her saying, I stink. Yes. I stink. Uh -huh. To tell you how bad it was. Right, right, she, right. There was no getting used to no that. No getting used to it. There was just no getting used to that. Mm. The phenyl aminuria that I talked about mm -hmm. is also called fishy fish odor syndrome. Okay. So the person smells like rotten fish. Oh, wow. She said rotten eggs. Her own with... is poo. Kind. <laughs> Canned for days. In her words, not mine. Wow. So, and then she has to, in winter, she has to take a bath, undress fully. Right. And take a bath like three times. Right. So it was haunting her. Right. So body odor for what it is, is a psychosocial problem. Okay. It causes severe social isolation. Right. Psychologically, the person loses self-esteem. Right, right, The right. person comes into a place and people are holding their breaths or just quietly walking away from her. Mm -hmm. So the person just loses all forms of um, confidence. Right. Coming up to mix up with people right. is no longer there. Whoever you are, however highly placed you are, right. starting to have that level of body odor she has is enough to just crash the right, person right, right, into right. depression right. and all that. Right. And she made frantic efforts. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a thing about hygiene. Mm -mm, For mm -mm. some people, mm -mm. it's about excessive exercise, poor hygiene. They mm. haven't brushed well. Mm -hmm. They didn't bathe well. Mm. They are sweating. They are wearing maybe dirty underwear. Yes, yes, yes. But that didn't look like her case. She could okay. afford expensive perfumes. Yes, she could. She could. So, and she was not, she was conscious of what was happening to her. So she made efforts. Mm -hmm. And to tell you the truth, sometimes when you now mix a very terrible odor yes. with yes. a so-called expensive yes. perfume, yes. you become a horror to anybody yes, yes, that yes, comes yes. near yes, you. Yes, yes. So in medical science, whether it be the hereditary one, the, the phenylketo amino we are talked about, is incurable. But the hereditary one, sorry to interject, um, should it just break out in adulthood? No, it's not expected yes, to break out in adulthood. I would, yes. I would assume that it should have started, it should have started earlier. Even if it was not noticeable when she was a child, once she got into adolescence yes. and had those fully matured sweat glands, it should have started manifesting. Yes. Hmm. I'm told that body odor at times is a pointer or an indication of an underlying health condition. Yes, yes. So, you know, would you say, but she didn't make any mention no, of, of any no, kind of illness. No, it was just sporadic Not and at spontaneous. All. Not at all. Mm. For example, mm. the a person who has liver disease, there's some treatment they give them that has to do with adding, giving them choline. Okay. So that choline is a protein okay. that is similar to what you find in in eggs in me okay okay such okay. products yes okay. so it's not the enzyme to break it down mm -hmm. is not in the person the person inherited did not have just does not have those enzymes oh wow so the person gets get, keeps accumulating the end product which is phenylalanine mm -hmm. which has that typical mm -hmm. fish odor smell mm -hmm. so um that's one condition mm -hmm. People who have chronic kidney disease, like end-stage kidney disease, mm. they have what you call ketotic breath. Okay. So they smell like ammonia. Ammonia, wow. to some people, is like a strong stench of urine. Okay. Because they are not able to metabolize the end products, the, the, the kidney that should be performing that excretory organ uh -huh. is not functioning optimally. Okay. optimally. Okay. So there's a build-up of, um, of that ammoniacal smell. Okay. Okay. People who have um, something like um, diabetes okay. can also have what they call um, diabetic ketoacidosis. Yes. And then the person's smell 
has ketone bodies. Some people will say it smells like alcohol or acetone. Right, right, right. So the person just walks around with it. Right. Sometimes, some people who are on antibiotic treatment, uh -huh. most especially the penicillins, right, right. it just comes out from the sweat. Mm. Some people, just the food they eat, mm. onion, spicy food, garlic, garlic and all that. And all that. Mm -hmm. Some mm -hmm. people, for health reasons, are on supplements that have garlic. Okay. Some people, for health reasons, are on some probiotics. Okay. And all those things uh -huh. can now lead to foul odor. Right. But, so for this woman, if there was any of those changes right. in her health or in her diet... I'm sure she would have taken note of it. Right. Yes. So would you say that, you know, because NSPPD team, they captioned this as a demonic body <laughs> odor. They couldn't find, there's no known cause. And would you say, what would you, would you say they are right? As a physician, uh -huh. this woman was very deliberate in everything that she described. Right. She was perturbed. She was disturbed. Right. If there was any underlying health condition like diabetes, mm -hmm. She would have known. They are, they are all right, come like syndromes. Right. Increased urination, increased drinking right. of water, all that. I'm sure she didn't have Prolonged any of for that. Two months as if well. it was a kidney disease, right. she would have had all the puffy, puffy face, right, right. swollen legs, and every weakness, extreme weakness and all that. She didn't have all that. Yes. So it didn't look like that. And somebody who was seeking a solution, I don't think it was at that point that she increased her proteinous right, intake right. or intake of garlic right. and all that she right. would have run away from all that right so um it's really must have been it's demonic. Square. It's, it's very square. Square. It's, it's very square. very very uh -huh. yes square. very difficult to explain medically yes. Yes, yes it is yes glory to god and here we have a word came on the altar of fire after two months she had been isolating for two months and then by a word this odor this strange square odor just ceases to exist hallelujah wow. glory hallelujah. to god you know um this testimony for me point to just the, the the depth of God's love for us. Because, you know, amidst all the words of knowledge that's coming out on the altar of fire, this is not a life-threatening condition. Yes, it, it may was. be life-altering, yes. but it's not life-threatening. And so for God to deem it necessary to attend to this issue that um, does not necessarily, you know, need that much urgency, mm. you know. It just shows that God really does care about the little aspects and things that are going on in our lives. Those little concerns that we have, God really does care and love us tremendously. Yes. Wow, what a phenomenal testimony really awesome. that was. Really awesome. Body odor, two month long body odor reversed by one word from God right here on the altar of fire. Glory to God. Our second testimony is from Sister Ada, and she's testifying from the United States of America. She testifies about three children healed of asthma. Wow. Click on the share button if you're yet to. We'll be right back. My name is Ada. I am sending this testimony from U.S. I joined NSPPD in 2021. I was listening to one of the prayers and Pastor Jerry said, your three children are asthmatic and God is healing them. What is this strange attack on your children? I see all your children, they are asthmatic. All. All. They are all asthmatic. You are not asthmatic. Your husband is not asthmatic. This arrow of asthma, by the power that raised Jesus from me, I decree that they are broken by fire. I have three children, and all of them were asthmatic. So I took that word and I started praying for my children, and God healed them. Now my children are asthma free. All of them. Now my children can do what they couldn't do before. Now my children can play without running out of breath. Now my children can do physical activities without asking for their inhalers. Now my children play sports. Two cold seasons have passed and my children did not 
have any respiratory issues. They did not show any sign of respiratory distress. Cold season was our worst season because that's when they get sick the most. But throughout the cold season, none of them had breathing problems. They have common colds like every other person, but they don't have breathing problems anymore when they have common cold. One of them even had COVID and she did not have any respiratory issues. She did not show any sign of respiratory distress at all. <laughs> you may not understand. You may not understand what it's like when your children are unable to breathe. When your child cannot breathe, as a parent, you cannot breathe also. So I have come to return all the glory. I have come to say thank you, Jesus. I have come to say thank you, Father. I've come to say thank you to this great God of NSPBD, who does great and mighty things, who can heal three children all at once. Thank you, Father. I am so grateful. I am so thankful. Father, I give you all the praise. Thank you, Jesus, for what God cannot do does not exist. Thank you, Pastor Jerry. Thank you, Pastor Eno. Thank you, Pastor Ogo. Thank you, Pastor Kim. Thank you, all the NSPPTians worldwide for saying amen to all the prayers, for joining hands together. The Bible said one will chase 1,000, but two will chase 10,000. Thank you for joining hands together to chase millions, billions, trillions, zillions. Thank you all and God bless you. What God cannot do does not exist. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Woo! Woo! What wow. a deliverance and wow. liberation in that wow. house. Three children. Not one, not two, but three, three children. Glory to God. Wow. And if you notice that video of the word that came, it's quite an old video. Yes. So it means that she must have taken time since 2020 and, and to, watch them. to watch them. And Two for cold her, seasons yes, passed. Winter has COVID. passed. COVID passed, yes. And so for her to be testifying two years later, she has studied them. What the Lord has done there is permanent. Glory to it's God. Permanent. Glory Hallelujah. to God. When Does, he heals, he heals he completely. He heals completely. Yes. Glory to God. Yeah. Now, let me just start off by asking, what is the correct pronunciation of that word? <laughs> I hear some say Ashma. I hear some say Asma. So what exactly is the right pronunciation? A-S-T-H-M-A is pronounced Asma. Asthma. Asthma. A-S-M-A. It's pronounced asthma. Asthma, yes. Okay, yes. right. And I find that it's a pretty common condition. Yes, it is. Tons of people seem to have it. Tons yes. of children particularly. Yes. Um, and I think people just generally underestimate the severity of this condition. Um, I believe it is life-threatening and fatal. Yes, it is. It, it is, could be. Any episode can be life. Is Any episode is life-threatening and can end anyway. Oh, wow. Yes. Wow. Yes. So what exactly happens? Tell me about this condition. Just to add to what you just asked. Yes. Can anybody just have mucus or hold the person's breath right. for like five minutes? It's difficult. No, no. It's like the life is being suffocated and choked out of you. Right. Yes. So that's what happens in asthma. Mm. Yes. So it's... A chronic obstructive, uh, is a chronic inflammatory airway disease. I see a picture. Yes, yes. Okay, so let's take a look at that picture. Okay. In that picture to my right is what is obtainable in the normal human lung. Okay. And to my left is what is obtainable in an asthmatic lung during um, a crisis or during an episode of asthma. Okay. So we can see the caliber, that's the opening part where... 
air should have a free course in the normal lung. Okay. How big it is. Right. However, in the asthmatic oh, patients, wow. yeah, in the asthmatic patients, when this attack starts, there is inflammation. There's, there's a swelling of the tissues around, okay. of the lung tissues around that opening, that airway, the bronchi. Yeah, and then even the muscles of the bronchi are also tightening. Okay. They are constricting. Okay. As if that is not worse. That little pattern space you're seeing, uh -huh. the body is a lot of secret mucus, thick oh, mucus wow. secretion is coming through it. So you find them coughing. Right. They are, they are coughing, they're breathless. Uh -huh. They're just, they're so weak. They're just choking. It's as if, if you see an asthmatic, it's as if the person could die any minute. Like, right. this could just be my last breath. Right. So these are actually the buildup of things, the inflammation, the constriction of the muscles, and the increased secretions okay. all make it very difficult for hmm. the person to breathe in or to even breathe out. Hmm. Yeah. It's, it's, it's terrible. Every single episode can lead anyway. Yes, and yes. there's no cure for this. It's incurable. It's wow. incurable, yes. So what actually causes all this? So basically, you had her three children. Mm -hmm. Children are known to be playful. Right. So any, they're not exercise tolerant. Okay. So anything that just needs increases demand for oxygen right. can trigger oh, an asthmatic wow, attack. Wow. So they cannot play the way normal children play. Right. Extremes of temperature, whether it is too cold or too dry air, right. can trigger, can an, trigger attack. an attack. When you fry thin, any kind of smoke can wow. trigger an attack. Wow. Any normal respiratory infections that are usually self-limiting. Right. For an asthmatic, when that secretion from the infection starts. Right. An attack can start any moment. Wow. So these are people who have to live on routine drugs. Ah. On a daily basis, they just have to be taking drugs to oh, control wow. the inflammation. Yes. Oh, Most okay. times, they are even on daily steroids. Wow. To just control the inflammation. Wow. And then they watch. Some, for some people, is um, like those that are late onset. Some people is um, an occupational thing. Okay. So they get into an occupational space and there's an irritant, something toxic something they're allergic to, okay, and okay. their airways become hyperactive. Wow. Yes. Wow. Yes. So I'm just imagining... But more often than not, it's hereditary. It's hereditary most yes. of the time. Yes. And it's incurable. And it's incurable. You see, when Papa was introducing that testimony, he said... The parents is not hereditary. He was mindful yes, to yes, say yes. it's not yes. hereditary. It's not hereditary. So yes. what is that? How does that happen? Can people, you know, procure asthma in the course of life? Uh, when the person, like I said, occupational asthma is yes. exposed to irritants or okay. allergens, things okay. that the person, yes, the person okay. can start. The airways can start uh, oh, reacting. Wow. Yes. Wow. You know, I'm just imagining the plight of a mother with three children that are asthmatic because this disease or condition limits your life. You know, exactly. you're careful where to go, exactly. what, what to do, how they're playing. Uh, to have three children go out of your house every day. I mean, you'll be living in fear. Honestly, where are they going to? Honestly, well, how would they turn up at the end of the right, day? Am right. I going? The person is constantly anxious, right. waiting for that call. Right. Yes, and as, uh, an attack has started. And wondering if your child has his inhaler, inhaler yes, with him. Yes. Wondering if people around are educated enough and know what to do in the event the child is having mm -hmm. a crisis. So this is a, a, a disease or condition that limits your entire life. Honestly, it does. Mm -hmm. And for the children, can they really explain why they shouldn't play like all right. that children are right. playing. How do you and explain that And then to think to of in one family having three. Three. I can be, you can almost bet that on a weekly basis, they'll be in and yes. out of hospital. Yes, 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 yes. You can imagine the chest of drugs, of drugs they will have. And the three of them might have individualized triggers. Yes. What tri triggers, triggers this one. person may be different from what triggers the other person. My goodness. It affects everybody. Like the in the household of people with asthma, they cannot use rugs. Hmm. Their curtains, mostly they may have to use Venetian blinds. Their hmm. curtains cannot be full and as pretty as they want it. Hmm. So it's not just restricting them, it's restricting everybody. The parents cannot travel without being afraid. Yes, yes, yes. What will happen to my child in yes. my absence? Yes, yes, yes. So yes. It's just, it just ties everybody down. Does asthma get better with age? It does not get better with age. The person has to learn to avoid the triggers. Wow. So, you know, there are people that claim they outgrew it. They had it when they were small. They outgrew it later if on. If the person comes in contact 
whether it's polling, whatever is your, whatever is the person's trigger, the likelihood that it will come again. Wow. Um, is there. Wow. So this is years of hospital visits, trips to the ER, of living in fear and anxiety, broken by one word from God, glory to God, an incurable disease, you said. Yes. Wow. Asthmatic patients, three of them, not one, not two, but three, healed by one word from God. Glory to God. Glory. What a God awesome cannot God. What do. an awesome God. Does not, not exist. exist. No, wow. it doesn't. It doesn't wow, exist. this is a huge, profound testimony. Yes, it is. Our third and final testimony for today. Wow. You know what is even more profound than three children being healed from asthma? Three children being healed from sickle cell disease. That's our third and final testimony for today. This is family visitations wow. happening. Yeah. And it comes from our sister evangelist, Mrs. Shalom, testifying from Wari Delta State, Nigeria. Click on the share button if you're yet to. We'll be right back. That God has shown mercy, Pastor Jerry. After my marriage, I had my first child. She was okay. I had my son, my first son, and he was diagnosed of sickle cell anemia. My son, my first son, is ten years now, Pastor Jerry. For that ten years, it has been hell. Going to the hospital, running to the hospital, going up and down buying drugs. I had my second son, and he was diagnosed of sickle cell anemia, Pastor Jerry. That one even had to go through a lot, paralysis and all the rest, and God just took God through. We have been praying, we have been believing God for a miracle. Pastor Jerry, I had my third son. He was the night of sickle cell and again. It had been a battle in my family. Prayers here and there from men of God, from friends and well wishers. We have been praying. Anytime they go to school, I will just tell the class teacher that this is what you do. Anything, call me. I'm always at, a, at an alert, you know. It has been a journey. I don't even know how to start telling you because Pastor Jerry, I will come to Abuja. I will personally bring those children to Abuja because my story, here, the video cannot take my story, Pastor Jerry. Yeah. Pastor Jerry, when my sister linked me into NSPPD, I started at a time, you know, uh, a lot of words were coming, it's too noisy, so I stopped. At the time, I went back. I said, no. I took the thing so serious. 2022, I was always at the altar. I never missed every seat I'm there, anything, partnership. I just took the thing very serious. I, I was just doing the way that my father But I was, I was always at the altar. I soaked myself at the altar. Pastor Jerry, my house is full of drugs. Video the drug, Pastor Jerry. My house is drugs, drugs of one drugs. And this is my mini compost, Pastor Jerry. Mini pharmacy, mini pharmacy. Drugs everywhere, Pastor Jerry. Drugs, drugs everywhere. Anyone that come out will buy. Any network that come out will buy. They say, oh, for the you know, receiver. But any money they talk, will buy. My husband has spent huge amounts of money because of these children to keep them going, Pastor Jerry. Whenever you say genotypes are changing, I will shout, I will say, Amen, Amen. Whenever they have crisis, I say, Oh God, remember me. I will keep saying, God, remember me. But I didn't worry. On that faithful day, Pastor Jerry, on the 5th, on the 5th of February, in the fourth service, Pastor Jerry, I wrote it that you mentioned. I said, Papa said, you said, Papa, you said, genotypes are changing on the fourth service. And I stood up from my bed and I shouted, Amen, Amen, Amen. After the Amen, Papa, I didn't take any step of faith to go and check them. I continued my journey. I said, Let the will of God be done. Papa, on the 14th of February, on NSPP day, hey, Papa, I wrote it that you repeated again. You said that genotypes are changing. I just heard genotypes are changing. Akapo tequila ki koraji. Record of Russia. Alibaradaza. Let the genotypes begin to change. Let it begin to change. Let it begin to change. Let it begin to change. All by the help of the Lord. And I wrote it. I said on the 14th of February, Papa repeated again on NSVP that genotypes are changing. And instantly my children genotypes changed to AA. I wrote their name, Papa. Nikume. Aka chukuti beze chuku. I wrote their name, Papa, look at it. I said, change to AA. Papa, after writing this thing, after I went to school to pick them. Papa, when I got to school to pick my children, 
The teacher told me that one of them said he's having headache, that the eye is turning him. I said, ah, what could be that cause? I said, okay, this is an opportunity for me to run this test. I took them to the lab. I didn't tell my husband. I didn't tell when I got to that lab, it's one of the good labs in Warren. They asked me what I want to do. I said, jello type, malaria, everything. Papa. They collected these children blood. None of them cried for the first time. If they want to collect their blood, the whole world got a hold of this one. Everybody sat on their own and collected the blood. One of them is 10 years old, one of them is six years, and one of them is still going to four. Papa, at the end of the day, they decided to come the next day. That night, I was just saying, what God cannot do to us, what God cannot do to us. The next day, I went, Papa. As I was going, I was singing that song. In him, there is no failure. As I got there, Papa, they brought the results. And they called me inside. I said, hey, maybe they want to come and tell me, Madam, look up, look at Papa. As they gave me the result, Papa, you can't believe what I saw. I saw the genital AA. Video into it so that Papa can see Papa. A -A -A -A. This is the first one, AA, Papa. Papa, Papa, this is the second one. The second one, Papa, AA. The second one, AA, Papa. Papa, this is the third one. Hey, 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 hey Papa. I shouted because I am so far, Papa. I don't even want to start crying. I don't even want to start saying my story. I am so far. Facing of blood, giving of injection, being here and there. I will not sleep in the night. Massage here, massage here. Papa, I never knew what people say go through until the team entered my house, Papa. I shouted. I told the people there, I said, hey. I said, do you know any people did Yes, yes, she shouted. Who oh, cannot do does not exist? Papa, I came down on her and I told my brother, one of my brother that went with me, I said, look at all. We shot. I started dancing in the whole place. I was making a whole of noise in that whole place. There will be a video, Papa, when I got to school to pick my children. Papa, I will send the video for you now. The teachers went mad. Some ran on the ground, some rolled, some kneeled down. They were shouting, shouting everywhere. Some people started mocking me. They say, is it my dad? Are they going to another hospital? Are they checking here? Is it by checking for later on? Papa. Hey, Papa. And my heart started panting. I say, what book I'm not Hey, Papa, what gave me correct better? On the 16th of February, Papa, you said, my good news will not become bad news. And I claimed the Papa, look at what I wrote to Papa. You said, my good news will not become bad news. Papa, hey. And I went to collect the result the next day, Papa. When I got there, they said they have tested this five times. You know, it's our hospital I went to. And when our hospital is one of the best hospitals in Wari, good medical hospital. Papa, when I got there, they said they have checked it five times. They know our history, blah blah blah. They were checking it again. They thought that maybe their machine has a fault. Though they bought the machine new, they had to send for the technician to come and work on the machine. Papa was there, they ran into another one and they said they want to run it from the last time. Papa, after running it, Papa, they brought out the results and it became the same. Papa, Papa, look at the confirmation result from my hospital. Hey, hey, the first one, Papa, Papa, the first one, hey, hey, hey Papa, I don't know what to say. Oh, Papa, oh, Papa, Papa, look at the second one. The second one is hey, hey, Papa. The second one is AA. Papa, the top one is AA. They were perplexed, so Papa started introducing NSPPD to them. Like, Papa, the news is everywhere. Some people will come here, you don't want to worry. We have been seeing this one of NSPPD, but we have not seen anyone that is critical and worried. Papa, the news is everywhere. Papa, I don't know where to start from, but I will come to watch my Papa. Papa, Jerry, is it? God bless you. Thank you for this work that you started. You came for me, or you came for me. God has done it. I am coming for more testimony, Papa. You are I am coming for more, 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 more great, great testimony. Papa, thank God for using you for my family for this generation. Papa, your own will not run that. The divine coverage of the Lord will be upon you and your family. Papa, the Lord will give you the strength of a unicorn. More fire, more greater anointing. From now on, so your anointing will increase. Papa will love you. Papa will love you. Pastor Uguru, Pastor Oke, Mama Eno, God bless you for the time. God bless you, Pastor Jerry. Pastor Jerry, let me show you my children. Let me show you to them. Let me show you. This is Ukume, Pastor Jerry. This is Ukume. Ukume. Hey, go and bring Yeze. Go and bring Yeze. These are my children. This is Yeze. He's sleeping, Pastor Jerry. Those are the three boys. What God cannot do? Pastor Jerry, let me just show you the face of my husband a little so that he will say, God, what God cannot do does this. Pastor Jerry, God bless you. God bless you. Pastor Jerry, this is my husband. What God cannot do? Does not exist. What God cannot do? Pastor Jerry, we love you. We are saying we love you. Thank you, Pastor Jerry. We love you. Hey. Wow. Hey. Wow. Glory. Nobody can get over this. Hey. Wow. Awesome. 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 Hey.
hey. two strange acts of hey. God. Three children at the same time. Three children at the same <sighs> time. Ten <sighs> years old, six years old, three years old. And I keep saying this. I cannot even imagine the plight of this family. Because, you know, this ailment is one that affects the quality of life for the entire family. Everybody is in it. Not one, not two, not three. And it's an expensive condition to very, maintain as well. Very. I saw her, you know, medicine cabinet. <laughs> pharmacy, mini pharmacy. That's what she called it in her house. Yes. Tell me about and sickle Besides cell. the ones in the pharmacy, they were also littered yes, all littered over. Littered all over. Littered all over. Tell me about sickle cell condition, sickle cell disease. Sickle cell disease is a hereditary condition. Okay. Yes. So it starts in utero. It starts when the child is in the womb. During the cell divisions, usually genes are gotten from the mother and from the father. Okay. So on that chromosome 11, okay. there are types of um, hemoglobin. There's a normal one that is A and okay. there's a one that is S. Okay. And there's also fetal hemoglobin that is found in the children. Okay. So in this division, the father contributes an S and the mother contributes an S. So the child has two of that right. hemoglobin SS. Wow. So it's usually called sickle cell anemia because they are prone to anemia. Okay. Most times their blood levels are low. Okay. So the blood has different parts, whether it's a red blood cell, white blood cell, platelets and all that. Right. The red blood cell is responsible through the um, pigment called the hemoglobin. That's the thing that carries oxygen throughout mm -hmm. the body. Mm -hmm. But in sickle cell, the hemoglobin that the person has, the red blood cell that the person has, is not the normal red blood cell. Right. I think okay, so, so yeah, there is this picture. If we see the one on top, Right. The one on top is a normal red blood cell. Okay. The normal red blood cell is described as biconcave and oval. Okay. And it's quite flexible. Right. So when it goes, um, as the body, as blood goes from the bigger vessels into smaller blood vessels, then right. into even tinier ones called capillaries. Right. So for the red, the normal red blood cells, they have no, they have no qualms. They, they don't have any, any trouble. Um, finding maneuvering, yes, finding yes. their way from a bigger caliber to smaller caliber. Right. However, if we see the picture below, you will ask why is it even called sickle cell? Right. Have you heard of sickle before? For harvesting the sickle? Yes, yes. Okay. It's oh, curved. right, yes. it's curved. Yes. Yes. Okay, okay. So instead of just being round and smooth, it's curved. Right. Besides the fact that it is curved, properties that it has is that it is sticky. Okay. So it's gumming to each other. So they just um, they just um, get gummed to one another. Mm. As if that is not enough. That sickle-shaped thing is stiff. Oh. Yeah. The normal red blood cell, like I said, is flexible. Right. So it just gets to a corner, assumes the shape, right. and just and passes. Just passes. Yes. Oh, wow. But in the sickle cell, it's not there. The hook, the sickle just goes and... And once that happens, there's a blockage. Right. So anything that is distal, the blood flow into whatever organ that the blood should have gone into is compromised. Oh, right. So it causes the, the things that can come from this blockage, this occlusion. Right. Which is not time. They can happen anytime. You see the child looking healthy in the morning, five oh, minutes no. later. As the blood that the activities in the in the body are back to back, right. so as it's going on, it can just start anytime. Hmm. And the person, one thing that is constant is the pain, pain, pain. Any parent who watches a child go through pain has two times that the pain, pain that the That's child right. is experiencing. That's right. So I, it must have been. A hellish condition she in that family. She talked about paralysis as well. How does this result in paralysis? Yes. So, like, you know that these children are prone to stroke. Oh, okay. You would think that stroke is something that should happen in only age, in adults. Right. So, they're occlusive. They're ischemic. Ischemia means um, blockage of blood supply. Uh -huh. So, anytime I can see that. another picture. Yes, that's wow. also sickle cell. That's the one on cell. top is just is flowing. Normal healthy? Really. Yes, the one oh, beneath. Wow. Yes. Sickle. Yes. Right. So, if this happens in the brain, Mm. The brain cells around that area are deprived of blood wow. and all their functions wow. are compromised. So the person can come down with full paralysis. Wow. Yes. Or Lifelong as, paralysis. Yes. 
at that age? Yes, they can. Wow. Sometimes it can resolve depending on how much patency that um, is um, that is restored. Yes. Okay. Okay. So they're just in pain. They have acute chest syndrome. So if the blockade happens in the lung, that's it. Their bones, they sometimes they may need to have some joint transplants because uh -huh. if it happens at the neck of a bone, it causes a vascular necrosis. Oh my God. The bone just dies. Ah. There's something they call hand and feet syndrome. So more often than not, their hands and their feet are swollen. The hemoglobin is required for infection control. So any little infection that they have is difficult to heal when they're anemic. Their kidney, their liver, it causes any organ can be hey. kidney, any organ at all hey. can be affected. So, and any crisis, any crisis that starts can be life threatening mm. and is incurable. Mm. They have to avoid so many things. Mm. Normal stress, anything that is a stress or exhaustion. Hmm. A very common trigger that they have is dehydration. Oh, really? So children, do they know to yes, just constantly yes, yes, drink yes. water? Drink water, right, right, so, right. Once they are dehydrated, they can it start causes, having. Wow. The normal in like in our area where malaria is endemic. Right. When they have malaria, it's an infection. It's something else for them. Okay. So they actually have to be on lifelong pro prevention of the common ailments that are hey. available in this area. Hey. So on a daily basis, they are drinking drugs. No way. Anything at all can trigger ah. an attack. This is it's a not a life you wish devil. on your enemy. No, this is a not. lie of the yes, devil. Because, is. I mean, the, it's their genes, right? Yes. That is shaped as... So there's yes. nothing that can be done about nothing. it. Nothing. Nothing can be done nothing about it. Nothing, except the advances in medical science. Okay. Like you have bone marrow, bone marrow transplants. transplants. Right. Yes. Or you can have the stem cell transplant. Okay. There are advances that have been okay. made. Okay, and in that... But how many people can afford that? Okay. And then it's not a 100%. It's, sometimes there can be a failure of the transplant. Okay. There can be rejection. Right. Yes, so it's not even... It's not like it's a much easier option. Hmm. If it was for one child, you say, okay... Then, but for three, three. children, I oh mean, my one God. child is difficult. It's a enough. handful. God forbid the crisis should meet you without money. Because if you have this condition, you have children, you can't even save. You can't plan for tomorrow. You know, every money you have, you're keeping it to treat the next person that is going to be ill. That's just negativity is just grabbing, yes. grabbing, you can't, grabbing you can't your resources. Plan, you can't plan, you can't make investments. You're just thinking about the next person that's going to be sick. Because God forbid that crisis should come and you don't have money, blood transfusion, paralysis. It's just a whole, whole lot. And here we are, no no transplant, no stem cell. None of that. None of what that What our God all. cannot do. No, no. How does, does this happen? Exist. Oh, my God. It's hey! really a, a strange act of God. Is. Hey, this is a strange act of God. You know, the Bible says, I have come. I'm repeating this scripture again because many times we settle. I have come that they might have life. You might have been born with it, but you don't have to live with it. You don't have to live with it all through your life. Glory to God. Three children, not yeah, you one, know, not this, two, not I three. Love, I love this woman. Right. I love her because of the several steps she took. Uh -huh. She left the altar of fire because it was noisy. Right. But when push came to show, she, she came back, came back mm -hmm. with everything in her. And she keyed in, into partnership, into everything that was happening. What you have mentioned is the fact that she had a journal. She had where she documented. So did they Papa say word. sickle cell is disappearing, is reversing? She went there. She wrote their names. Hmm. Do I remember? Do you remember their names? But she wrote, so cool, she wrote the remember. three names. The three names. And said, you are no longer sickle cell. You don't no longer have sickle cell. Mm. So for that was a legislation. Five tests were carried out. That was not a legislation. One, not two, not three, not four, but five tests carried out. Like Papa would always tell us on NSPPD, right? your congratulatory note, mm. write the things you do not want to see, mm. write your expectations. Mm. This week, there was divine evidences. We were writing all our mm. evidences. Mm. Mm. So she went to her book and she wrote. Mm. And she had it even as she just decreed in her book. Mm. Hallelujah. Our Glory God is awesome. God. Our God, God is awesome. I know these children, that's the only life they know. Yeah. That's the only life they know. Since they were born up till now, imagine the one of 10 years old. Mm. All he knows about life is just sickness. Sickness. 
sickness. You don't play too much. You don't eat certain things. You have to be drinking water. You're in the hospital. That's, that's the life they know. But Christ has set them free. And I'm glory to God that they are walking so long, in that Did you see right where now. the naysayers came? Right, of course. To rock her, to make <laughs> to her doubtful. Her oh, mm -hmm, God. Mm -hmm. Oh, they said, God. No way. And Papa followed up. Right. That's your good news. We'll, we'll never not turn, turn to, to bad, bad news. news. Yes. And yes. she caught it. Mm. And then went for that test. Glory. I also noted, she said, we went to our hospital, yes, group our medical. Hospital. So that suggests that her husband they have a hospital. Yes, mm, is probably. also a medical practitioner. So they know about this yes, condition too yes, well. Yes, too well. Yes. My God. Ha! That burden has been lifted. Lifted forever. Burden lifted. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Wow, wow, Do you see wow. the joy, whether it's in the hospital? Hey. That was a revival that broke out Glory. there. Are you the Did one? Did you see the school? Are you the woman that this <laughs> happened for? The news has gone viral, ah, as it should. Ah, wow, the only Lord. God can do, do this. To him alone be all, be all the, the glory. Glory, glory, glory. Wow. Our first testimony for today, we saw demonic bo body odor reversed. Our second testimony, we saw three children With healed asthma. of asthma. And our third and final testimony, we saw three children healed of sickle cell disease. What our God asthma, cannot do does sickle not cell exist. are incurable. Incurable conditions. So for them to change with accompanying lab test results, Kai. Kai. it's only the finger of Kai. God. It's only the outstretched hand of yes, God. Yes, 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 yes. Wow. What a phenomenal time we've had. Dr. Ulaku, thank you so thank much you so for much. joining thank us. You. Wow, do you have final words? We, we have to go. Anything to say to our viewers? Um, I would want to tell our viewers that many have gotten their testimony from this altar. It is the revival of the strange acts of God. Things we saw in Bible times are repeating themselves right here today. Mm -hmm. So for anybody who has come, However long it takes you, don't go away. Just stay. Your hmm. miracle is the nest that is going to be aired on NSPPD. Amen, amen, amen. 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 You amen. know, I think the songwriter said, I will not settle for less because yes. there's more that's found in God. Yes. And what I find is that many times we settle. Many times we just tend to settle. For whatever reasons, we tend to settle when there's more. The Bible says, you know, Jesus gave himself so that he might rescue us from this present evil, this the evil in this present world. He can rescue us from all of that. So it is possible to live in victory right now. I just want to challenge someone. Do not settle for less than what the blood of Jesus has purchased. Someone needs to type and declare, I will not settle for less. I will not settle for less. I will for not less. settle Hallelujah. for less than what the blood of Jesus, Jesus has, has purchased. Offer. It is possible to live in victory right here in this present world. It doesn't matter whether you were born with that condition, whether you contracted it somewhere along the way. You can live in victory in this present world. That's why you need to join us on NSPPD so that you can enforce that victory that has been won. Come and join us 7 a.m. Nigerian time, Monday through till Friday. NSPPD continues. Come back and invite a friend to come join you on the altar of fire. The strange acts of God continues Saturday morning, 7 a.m. Nigerian time. Come back and join us. You will be so blessed that you did. Do you have a testimony of your own? Go ahead and be a blessing to God's people by sending in your testimony to the the testimony number written at the bottom of the screen. Have you shared today's broadcast? Go ahead and click on the share button. The world needs to know that sickle cell disease has been overturned. Reverse. Asthma has been reversed. Hallelujah. The world needs to know that God is still in the business of doing impossible things. Click on the share button if you are yet to do so. Are you following us across all of our social media handles? Go ahead and search for stream of Joy International. Like and subscribe so that you never miss what God is doing in this house, Streams of Joy International. Wow. That brings us to the end of our show. Dr. Ulaku, thank you once again for your time. 
I look forward to having you again and again. Thank you so much. It was such a pleasure. Indeed. Uh -huh. What God cannot do. Can never exist. Doesn't exist. Yes. Doesn't yes. exist. Yes, yes, yes. Can never, ever exist. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sharing. Till next week, Saturday, remember that what our God, God cannot, cannot do does, does not, not exist. exist.